So in this film, I'm going to show you how we can import AutoCAD files and Excel files inside engineering base. Uh, first for AutoCAD. Here you can see that I have a standard project without anything, nothing inside equipment folder, nothing inside function folder, nothing inside documents folder. Okay. And here I have an AutoCAD file. This AutoCAD file, if I go to the block editor, I can see that it has different blocks inside it. Okay. And if I go to attribute manager, I can see that each of these blocks has different attributes and each of these attributes have different name. So for example, SDIN FS2 block has an attribute of ECST name and the value of this attribute is FS2. Okay. So the first thing that I need is a AutoCAD file with some blocks and each block should have different attributes. If you don't have blocks and attributes inside AutoCAD, then the only thing that you have is a drawing, is a picture. So the only thing that you can import inside the engineering base is also a picture. That's obvious, correct? So the first thing that I do is to create a new drawing, not a sheet, but a drawing inside documents folder. And then I go to the templates, go to the sheets, go to the favorites. And here you can see that there are different templates. I have created a template for my, my AutoCAD file, but you can create any kind of template for your importing of AutoCAD files. This one, when I show you, it's just a simple blank page, white page, with this um, logo of engineering base. You can define any kind of template for your importing procedure, or you can just use one of these sheets from the favorite sheets templates. So I will go to the drawing folder, select macro. The name of the macro is advanced CAD import. So here I have an option. I have selecting the sheet button. When I want to select the sheet button, I have two options, select one file or select bunch of files. So it means that you can import 10,000 drawings AutoCAD files by just one click. Okay. So I will select my AutoCAD file. This is my AutoCAD file. And when I run the macro, so first of all, let's um, see, uh, take a look at these options. On the options, you have the graphics um, configuration. You have the scale. You can uh, make the import smaller or bigger. Now it is one by one. It means that it's the same size of AutoCAD. You can map layers. For example, if you have different layers inside AutoCAD, you can map them into layers of engineering base. And then you can uh, map the colors. The best is just to use the colors of AutoCAD files. So the drawing would be uh, totally similar to the AutoCAD. On the drawing, you should uh, choose a template. For example, I choose my template that I created before. You can choose different templates or you can choose your own templates. And in the blocks and attributes, at the moment, these, these are the blocks that I have created already that's coming from my last uh, import. But if I delete these um, blocks, and then click OK, and then go again to blocks, you can see that there is no block here, OK? And, and also the same with attributes. So the first time that I'm importing the CAD import draw DWG file, all the blocks will be loaded to engineering base. So for the first time, there is no equipment created here. There is no function created here. Okay. Only the drawing will be created under the uh, drawing folder and the blocks will be loaded inside the feature. So you can see that my drawing is created here, but there is no equipment, there is no function. Okay? So what I can do is just to delete this drawing because I, it, this drawing without any equipment or function is useless for me. So again, I'm going to run the macro, advanced CAD import, select my file, 
and this time I can see that all my blocks are loaded inside and join base. So you see the number of these blocks are less than the time that I showed you before because those blocks was also for different drawings that I have created before. It means that every time that you are importing a drawing inside AutoCAD, then all the blocks will be loaded inside the engineering base. Okay. Now here you need to make a mapping between the blocks inside AutoCAD and the um, equipment or functions inside engineering base. So for example, I can I can say that okay, this block is a device, and the type what type it, it has. For example, it has a it's a capacitor. Um, and the shape type you can choose, the master shape you can choose. These are these you have to type the name of the master shape here if you want to use the specific master shape. But the other option is to uh, just load the mapping file because when you create a mapping file, then you can save it. I already did that, so I already created the mapping file and then I saved it. Now I load it again. And I will use this mapping file and then create import. Now you can see at the left side that all the equipment are created, all the functions are created, and also the structure will be created under these um, equipment and function folders. And finally, the drawing, the, the sheet will be created at the drawing folder. So now we can see that I have a drawing. I can navigate to my items here and my items have their structure. And for each of them, so for example, this one, I can find it inside the engineering base. Yeah, this is the one. So you can see that this uh, the AutoCAD file, when it has some blocks and attributes, and when you create a mapping file completely, then it can be imported inside engineering base really fast and easy. And once and um, for mapping file, you just need to create it one time. Let me show you again the mapping file so you can have an idea what should be done inside of the mapping file. So this is the mapping file that I have been using. You can see that, for example, STINLABSU is a potential source. It doesn't have any kind of type. So, and the master shape is this one. Or for example, this is a device, it's a fuse type, and doesn't have any uh, master shape. And also for the attributes, See, for example, this one is a designation. So you have the list of all the attributes. You can just choose what, which attribute is this attribute. These are the attributes of all blocks, not for each block. Normally in AutoCAD, when you have, for example, location, then this location means location inside engineering base. It's for all the blocks, so you don't need to define it for each block. And the good point is that when in AutoCAD file, something is changed for example the name of this item will be changed then you import the autocad file again and you use the same mapping file then the object inside the engineering base will be updated automatically okay so this was about um, autocad just send me any kind of questions that you have regarding the special cases or a special kind of um, situations I'll create another empty project for importing the Excel file. Now, for the Excel file, 
consider I have an ex example Excel file here. It has different tabs. First of all, you can see the device list content, cable list content. These are the tabs of my Excel file. And it starts from numbers uh, row 6. The real data is, starts from row 6. Before that, it's just a, a header of my Excel file. Here you can see that I have different um, columns with different values. So I want to import this Excel file inside engineering base. What I do is to create, to add a button to see your equipment function and drawing. There is nothing inside. I would right click on the standard on, on the project level, select macro, import and update items. So this is my feature for importing the Excel files. First of all, you can, be to, uh, can choose between the Excel file or SQL Server database. I will choose Excel file. This is my Excel file. Excel example, XLS. Okay. So the second thing that you have to choose is the table that you want to import. You can see that here I have a list of all my tables, all my tabs in the Excel file. So, for example, I will choose device this content, which is this one, device this content. Okay. And I will say which row should be started. So, I have to start from row 5. Here you can row 6 actually. So, you can see that uh, from row 6, my real data will start, will be started. Okay. And here. You can say that which types do you want to be imported. Normally, we will choose all types, but if there is a specific Excel file, then you can choose only locations, wires, devices, or whatever. But I will choose all types. Now, here you can define a mapping for your Excel file. I will create a new. First, I will say what's the name of my mapping. I will say UL um, India. Okay, so here you can see that um, this is my Excel file. This is um, my project name. If you can see here, it's project name, uh, company name, the first row. C means, so if you just compare it, B, F2, C, F3. So you can see all this data is coming from in, um, the Excel file, correct? So you have F3, F4, F5, F6. You have different rows. You have all the rows here. And then, you again, you have this um, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6 here for the mapping. So what I will say is that, for example, F2 is, what is F2? Here is C, F2 is activity. So it's empty. I'll leave it. I'll start with the F3. F3 is a part of, okay? Here I can see F3 is a part of. So I will say it's a part of. The attribute uh, is designation. I mean, this name is a designation of my part of. And the type folder can be location. Okay. Now I go, for example, for designation. This is E. Designation is F5. So I go to F5. I would say it's an attribute. It's a designation. And in case you need some more, here I have only two attributes. In case you need more attributes, just go set attributes. And then drag and drop your new attribute to here. And then when you click here, you have the new attribute here. Okay. And I say this one is a primary key. This primary key is just to find which item is which item. So it's a key to find the items. Okay. And I click OK. Now I have my mapping name, so you just need to create one mapping file for one Excel file, and then I will create OK. Now I have a delta management here. The system will show me that all the, the items that are inside my Excel file are going to be created new. So they're all new. I will select all. It means that all of them should be created. And then you can see here, because I chose location, all my locations are created. For example, control system EX1, you can see that M10.1, uh, M10 this one, is created here. Okay? 
So you can just continue uh, creating the mapping file to add the comment, to add the material, add the type, add associated function, and build up your complete project from the next file with the mapping. And then later on, just use that mapping. So this is one thing. And then um, the next thing is updating. So for example, if I update uh, the map, the for example, let's run the macro again. Select macro, import and update items, run. I will select my uh, device list content, import as all items, and I will choose my UL, and I will edit my item. I just want to add the comments here. So here they don't have the comments. Now I, don't, I want to add the comments. It's F6, attribute comment okay now I will run it you can see that these doesn't have so these three for example this four doesn't have any comments so it means that they, they match but these because they have some comments so they have to be updated okay I will select all okay now my item has a comment frequency measure yes so you can see that this comment is exactly coming from here okay so whatever you update from the excel file you just need to run the macro select the correct mapping file and then your project will be updated automatically again if you had some questions just let me know send me an email or call me at any time thanks